everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I am Dr. Sanket Patil and uh, I'm a fellow in uh, Video Retina and Ocular Oncology and I am going to take you through this month's top five articles. Let's start with the first article, which uh, studied how the pigment epithelial detachment thickness and variability affects uh, visual outcomes in patients with neovascular age-related macular degeneration. The purpose of the study was to evaluate the impact of pigment epithelial detachment thickness, that is the height and thickness variability on best corrected visual acuity outcomes in patients with neovascular AMD in phase three Hawk and Harrier trials. The best corrected visual acuity outcomes were compared by comparing OCT images of uh, patients with different PED thickness and variability cutoff thresholds at baseline and up to 96 weeks. This study concluded that the greater PED thickness and PED thickness variability were associated with poorer visual outcomes in patients with neovascular age-related macular degeneration and they also had greater neovascular activity. Coming to the second article that studied about retinal capillary perfusion heterogeneity in diabetic retinopathy detected by optical coherence tomography and geography. The purpose of this study is to detect and quantify blood flow heterogeneity utilizing on fast swept source octa in patients with diabetic retinopathy. 10 consecutive on fast 6 by 6 millimeter foveal spectral source octa images were obtained from each eye and images of superficial and deep vascular complexes were arranged in temporal stacks of uh, 10 and registered uh, to a reference frame for segmentation using a deep neural network. The vessel segmentation was then masked onto each stack to calculate the pixel intensity coefficient of variation, that is PICOV, and map the spatiotemporal perfusion heterogeneity of each stack. The PICOV is a novel way to analyze octa imaging and quantify perfusion heterogeneity. The study concluded that retinal capillary perfusion heterogeneity in both the superficial and deep vascular complexes increased with DR severity. Moving on to the third article, which studied about vertical and horizontal metamorphopsia one year after surgery for macular holes less than 500 micrometers with and without inverted internal limiting membrane flap. The purpose of the study was to investigate the effect of an inverted ILM flap and other factors to metamorphopsia after macular hole surgery. Vertical and horizontal metamorphopsia were measured as M source scores using M charts post preoperatively and 2, 6, and 12 months postoperatively. 53 eyes of 53 patients were included, of whom 27 underwent conventional technique and 26 were treated with inverted ILM flap. The use of inverted flap has no evident bearing on the degree of postoperative metamorphopsia 12 months after the surgical repair of macular holes which were less than 500 micrometers. On to the next article uh, which studied the role of additional pneumatic retinopexy in patients with persistent retinal detachment after scleral buckling. The purpose of this study was to investigate the efficacy safety and indications of additional pneumatic retinopexy in patients with persistent retinal detachment after scleral buckling. This retrospective study included patients who underwent additional pneumatic retinopexy after scleral buckling for primary regmatogenous retinal detachments. The anatomical success rate after additional pneumatic retinopexy was 52.6%. Development of PVR grade B and inferior retinal tears were significantly associated with anatomical failure after additional pneumatic retinopexy. Additional pneumatic retinopexy may benefit patients with superior retinal tears and or low buccal height and those without PVR. 
coming to the last article which evaluated retinal structural and functional changes after silicon oil removal in patients with rheumatogenous retinal detachment best corrected visual acuity testing microperimetry and optical coherence tomography angiography were performed in 48 eyes with macula of rrds before and 3 months after silicon oil removal retinal structure and function improved to different degrees after silicon oil removal fixation stability and retinal sensitivity increased more than the best corrected visual acuity post operatively retinal sensitivity which was affected by the interval between retinal detachment and surgery and the duration of silicon oil tamponade gradually recovered after the silicon oil removal thank you